Hello and welcome to this section of the Trig and Precalculus Tutor. Here we're going to switch gears a little bit uh, and talk about what we call the Pythagorean identities. Right? Sounds very complicated, but I promise you that uh, it's not complicated. And in fact, it's some of the most useful identities um, that are available in Trig and Precalculus. So in truth, what I consider to be the most important identities, the ones that you have to know, are the ones that we learned in the first couple of sections, those fundamental ones with the trig rainbow. These guys rank right up underneath. I mean, they are so important that you'll use them constantly over and over and over again. And when I mean use them, I mean not just in your class. I mean when you get into more advanced subjects, you'll use them all the time. They pop up. Eventually, we'll get to some identities that are less used. But these guys here are used a lot. So I'm going to take a few minutes to show you where they come from because I think it's very important and that way you're not just like given these identities and saying, well, I'll just memorize them. Well, at least you'll kind of know where they come from. So we call them Pythagorean. All of you should have remembered or should remember the Pythagorean theorem. So let's kind of review that for a second. And you'll see that this identity or these identities come basically straight from it. So if you have a triangle, uh, and not just any triangle, a right triangle with 90 degrees there, and you have one side called A and one side called B, and the longest side we call C, that's the hypotenuse, right? Then you should all remember from basic you know, algebra or geometry or whatever, that A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. So it's the two shorter sides, you square them, and you set that equal to the longer or the longest side squared. That's the Pythagorean theorem. All right, now let me go and kind of draw a little line here. So we're gonna use that in a minute. Now, if you think about, stop thinking so much in terms of triangles, think about the unit circle. So let me draw a unit circle here. Unit circle, we use all the time in trig and precalculus. You should know that by now, right? And when we say unit circle, it just means it has a distance or a radius of one. So I'm gonna put ones everywhere, just so you kind of get reminded that we're talking about a, a circle with radius one. So let me go ahead and draw Here's the circle, and you have to apologize. I apologize in advance. This kind of looks more like an ellipse, right? It's not a perfect circle. So you have to kind of use your imagination and say, well, that's, that's a circle. All right, so then let's take any random angle, right? So here from the origin, we'll draw something up to the unit circle like this, and we'll put some angle there, right? So this specific angle doesn't matter. It can be anywhere, right? I'm just drawing a specific example to show you, right? How do we define sine and cosine, right? How do we define sine and cosine in general? Well, we have talked about that a lot, a lot. If you take the projection of whatever this is and project it along the x-axis like this, we call that sine, oh, I'm sorry, not sine, we call that cosine of theta. That's the definition of what a cosine is. Anytime you take something that goes up to a unit circle at whatever angle, and you take the projection along the x-axis, we call that cosine. And then we take the projection along the y-axis, the distance that it goes up in y, we call that sine of theta. That is simply the definition of what sine and cosine is. No matter what angle you're at, the sine is defined to be the projection along the y-axis, and the cosine is defined to be the projection along the x-axis. So as you walk around the unit circle, the sine and the cosine are going to change because the projection along these axes are going to change the whole way around. But don't forget, this is a unit circle. And that means that this side, if you kind of think of this as a triangle, right? That's kind of where we're going here. This is a triangle. This leg, we call it sine theta. This leg, we call it cosine theta. What would this leg be? Well, this is the hypotenuse. It goes all the way to the unit circle. That leg's always going to have a 